Hi, Father. I really enjoyed listening to your uh, last podcast, uh, Methus, Method in Your Madness, and you were asking for people to comment on it. And I was thinking, um, well, what I want to comment, I don't think would fit in, in the comment box on your on your section. But I suppose I wanted to just make a few points and maybe you could elaborate on them, you know, uh, a little bit more. And uh, and I really want to focus on two issues in Ireland as we move forward, you know, as, as this church does this great synodal process and whatever we're going to encounter. Two points I want to make, confession and the Eucharist. Um, because I, th I think unless those two issues are, are, are tackled first, anything else we do in the church is will end in nothing. You know, if we don't believe in love, the Eucharist, where do we end up? Um, I, I just find it incredible. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm 47, so I, I was born after Vatican II, but I just find it incredible that 50 years after the Second Vatican Council, which was supposed to you know, usher in an aggiornamento, uh, a, uh, the new evangelization and so forth. We have never been in a point in Irish Catholicism when so few people actually believe in the Eucharist, actually believe that uh, the Eucharist is source so much in the center of our faith. Um, and, you know, I, you know, I was very, I've been going to many traditional groups, but I've also been going to, to pray with, in some charismatic groups. And, um, you know, what struck me, you know, we were, we were at a prayer group recently and the priest, very charismatic, um, and, he, and, he, and when it came to saying the Mass, he really savoured the moment of the consecration, spent time in adoration um, and really conveyed on us the importance of the Eucharist and of confession. Um, you know, you could actually see he was, you know, completely enthralled with the mysteries of the Eucharist. I mean, the, the Vatican II has given us so many gifts. Some people would, would disagree with me on that, uh, in that area, especially because, you know, I, I love the Latin Mass, traditional Latin Mass. If I can go to traditional Latin Mass, I'll always go to it. But I don't reject uh, what was written in Vatican II as, as, not, as not having some good there. There are some good points. And the, some of the good points there, it, is, it did open up the church to, do, to expand <laughs> you know, in so many ways, um, the reach of the Mass, you know, in the English speaking world, sadly, there is this polarization in our, in the, in the Anglo, uh, in the Anglo speaking world around the, the traditional Latin Mass. You have a lot of American commentators, Taylor Marshall and so forth that, you know, just want to get rid of Vatican II. But I, you know, I, I speak many languages, and I also see if you go to Korea, they really love the Novus Ordo in, in their own in Korean. So we just can't just, you know, say that the Novus Ordo has no fruits at all in the church. It does, and especially if you go to Africa, which I've been there as well, in many parts, they actually do love the Novus Ordo in in the in the vernacular in their languages, and it's celebrated very reverently and very beautifully, you know. Uh, I think in the English speaking world, it, it, for some reason, it, we have seemed to have destroyed the Novus Ordo in many places. And in doing that, we've destroyed the Eucharist and we've destroyed confession. Because if we don't live in grace, we don't understand the sanctifying graces of the Eucharist. And this is the most important thing to understand in the church. And, and you know, that famous Irish Jesuit um, from Kerry, um, and Maliki Martin, you know, he did say it, you know, when he did capture the essence of what, what's going to happen in Ireland, what's, what's happened in Ireland, you know, we have, we have sidestepped the great mystery of the Eucharist and, and to centre ourselves in ourselves, to centre the faith in ourselves, in our worship, destroying our churches, destroying our altars, taking out altar rails, taking out our confessionals or not using our confessionals. Um... You know, the, the, there was no method in the madness that happened in the Irish church, no method at all. And that, and that destruction of the Eucharist came from our seminaries because there was no method in the formation. We need to be men of the Eucharist. We have to be men of the Eucharist. There is no other way to reform the church without the Eucharist, without being strongly centered in the power of the Eucharist. You know, so I'd if you're, you're asking for comments, I'd love you to, to just to center in on those two comments, you know, um, because the church needs 
to return to the Eucharist. We need reverence and love in the Novus Ordo. That's sadly so missing. It becomes a show, you know. Before Vatican II, the rite of the Mass was said, um, saying the black and doing the red, and that was it. Nothing added and nothing taken away. We could learn from that in a way and do the Novus Ordo as it's written, <laughs> you know. Do say the black and do the red in the Missal and, uh, and, and, and remove the, the personality side of the Mass and centre ourselves more in the Eucharist. You know, there's a lot to learn. I mean, there's, uh, I mean, that that was the what I picked up from, uh, you know, uh, from this very charismatic priest. And after mass, you know, he 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 asked, you know, he prayed over us, you know, wanted to, us to understand the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, I don't think we can just we can say one side is wrong and the other side is right or something in the church, the the right and the left. But there is no right and the left when it comes to the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the Eucharist. And we have to live in grace and we have to know what sin is you know sadly in ireland today we do not know what sin is because we do not catechize our children to understand what sin is and pornography and drugs and sex outside of marriage and abortion all these they're not sins anymore they're just mistakes and we wonder why our society is the way it is why we drink ourselves into oblivion what does the church stand for in ireland anymore what do we stand for in Ireland, Father Brendan? Answer that question. What does the Catholic Church stand for? And unless you're, we are rooted profoundly in grace and in the Eucharist, we will never, ever understand who Christ is or, or what the Church is, you know. And... Um, so uh, yeah, this is my comment on on your talk. I think your talks are fantastic. I think it's great to hear this in in uh, this this growing Catholic media, independent media, growing up in Ireland. And but we need we need to uh, the Church in Ireland needs to answer serious questions. And it's and um, you know because we can see the great divide opening up, the the disappearance of uh, you know liberal we have we have a core of liberal Catholics in Ireland that don't leave behind them a growing church. You know we've been teaching Catholicism as if it was another subject in schools and the kids don't like it and they don't believe in it. The faith is something we live in home, we pray at home. We teach our kids that it's something precious that they need to pass on to their children. It's their inheritance. The faith is the biggest inheritance that we can leave to our kids. And that's what we need to be passionate about, the faith in Ireland. Um, and uh, there is so much faith in Ireland. And I've, if it's in many ways it's hidden. There's a lot of people that, are, that have immense faith in Ireland. And we, and we, but we need priests who have the power to to you know forgive sins they have they are ministers of the eucharist we need to priest to be men of faith to be who they are meant to be in the church today we don't need social programs we don't need a regurgitation of environmental problems not not that i'm against all of that but we have to get the basics right first instead of going after what the world is already teaching us in the media i don't need to go to mass to hear about green policies and all that it's that's constantly constantly in the media we need to go to mass to know about christ you know who he is we need to we need to encounter that profound faith in the church in christ and we don't need mr father popular at mass or, or bishop popular at mass we need a father who has faith a bishop who has faith at mass that sometimes is willing not to do what the world is doing and not to be a mirror, a mirror of the world. And that's not easy, I know that, but that's what, what we need to have in Ireland. Otherwise the faith will never recover. Because unless you stand for something, you stand for nothing. Um, and uh, you know, this COVID has, has really transformed the Irish Catholicism because, um, you know, uh, it's not we're not seeing thousands of young people rushing back to the churches when we can have mass you know every priest on sunday now will look around his church and wonder where are all the families where are all the children 
but if you look at traditional Catholicism in Ireland, you know, the, the Latin mass centres all around Ireland, um, you know, in Belfast, in Uri, in Athlone, in Dublin, in Waterford, in Limerick, in Galway, um, it's a very different picture. And why is that? Why should that be? What have we done? Why are we not one, one holy Catholic and apostolic church that we should teach the same faith in every mass? So, you know, these are the, the questions that need to be asked by, by priests and bishops around Ireland as we move forward. If you're going to have a synod and the first thing you don't tackle is the Eucharist, you have failed us. You have failed Ireland. The Eucharist is the most important and treasured gift. And you just have to look at Vatican II, what it said. And the last encyclical of John Paul II, you know, the, the Ecclesia Eucharistia. Read those, read those documents, you know. <laughs> and where, what, and we, where, where are we with this, you know? I'm here in Ballina, County Mayo, I, and I hate criticizing clergy or bishops, but you know, during lockdown, where was our Eucharist? Where was our adoration? You know, there was no law stopping us having adoration or doing an, or blessing our homes with the with the with the Eucharist. You know, where you know simple things. You know, leaving the church open for prayer so that we can go in and have adoration in our massive cathedral here. You know, we had it once a month. You know, and it, and where. where and then we wonder why, why, why people don't believe. You know, if you sit in front of our Lord in the Eucharist, He transforms people. He transforms souls, and that's what needs to happen. In that's what what need to, needs to happen in the synod. You can go off and all of these social issues and uh, the the it, it'll probably turn it could turn into a woke fest. <laughs> and what will we leave for our children? what will we leave so father this is my commentary on your video i just want to thank you for it but maybe maybe at least these two issues confession and the eucharist i know you've spoken about them in other in other videos but how uh, what vision does our church in ireland have on those two issues confession and the eucharist because on the on the eucharist and you can only you can only get the graces of the sanctifying graces of the eucharist if you're in a stage of grace so you need those two things on those two things we will transform the church we will you know um and maybe another thing is on priestly formation in ireland you know where are we going with that so many people so many seminarians of minute that i've that i've left that are friends of mine you know have told me about their their being so disillusioned by by minute that you know you can't you can't be a normal man in minute anymore what's going on there you know, what happened to the formation there? It seems like a straight man that goes into minutes, and I'm sorry to say this, but he, he he's, he's automatically viewed it with suspicion. And they're going off to other congregations, they're leaving Ireland for formation, they're going to traditional movements. What's going on in minutes? And that needs to be addressed as well. You know, if we don't have holy priests, holy formed priests, the church will never recover in Ireland. No, I don't believe that will happen. I, you know, I think God has great plans, but we need to ask serious questions. Formation, confession, Eucharist, back to basics, simple things. Um, so thanks, Father, for your, all your efforts and uh, praying for you. Please pray for us and, uh, and hopefully someday we'll meet up. Take care. Bye.